Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you the secret to MTG Finance. It is actually quite simple. I have done, I've lived by two principles and they have served me incredibly well. The first principle is you should always buy reserve list cards because there will never be more, there will only be less. So that will be today's discussion. The other principle in case you're curious is always invest in cards that get better in time. And when I mean that, I mean something like Snapcaster. Snapcaster's power is dependent on the graveyard and in particular is dependent on instants and sorceries. I know for a fact that there will only be more instants and sorceries in every new set. Therefore, Snapcaster Mage's target increases every new set in modern format. Now, modern does have lots of reprints and things of that nature, but you look at Noble Hierarch, if it's not reprinted, it's over the moon because what do you know about one drop mana acceleration into with additional bonus exalted? It, they're very good. Very, very good. Uh, so they're the same with Philia. What do I know about death and taxes in Legacy? If it's strong enough in Legacy, it's probably good to really eventually be powerful enough in Modern, which it is in the human deck now. So let's focus on the first of... So the first one I put more weight towards. And the reason is if you have an Underground Sea, there are many damage copies. There's many things that can happen to these Underground Seas such as let's say somebody sets them on fire let's say that uh, it, it goes in a swimming pool it's lost the collection is in somebody's attic there will never be more of these tomorrow than they are today and that's what makes it attractive i'm not a fan of what people are doing to the card i think the card is becoming bloated but if you bought the card during a good period in time and you held on to it, just keep holding on to it because you will regret if you sell it. I think the market is a bubble. That being said, these are still insanely difficult to get your hands on. They're not, unless you have are a famous YouTube celebrity, you're not going to get your hands on these at a good price. These are very painful to buy. These are very painful to trade. Now, there's all types of car damage, water damage. Um, in humble Houston, it's very, very humid. So cards, and you don't need me to tell you this, right? You know what was the coast, how, how bad their quality of cards are. Uh, but the older cards, actually, the quality, I think, is much higher. But there's all types of stuff that can happen to it. The front can be defaced, the back can be defaced, they can have, they can bend, they can be disfigured in some way. And I'll show you a picture of a foil damnation that was burnt. Original foil damnation. A lot of bad things can happen to cards, including being sold by ex-girlfriends, being given to Goodwill, Goodwill throws out because it doesn't know what it is. The only guarantees in Magic right now for MTG Finance are reserve list cards, there will never be more, and two, the reserve list is not going to go away. I am a very big opponent of the reserve list. However, I live in reality, and I understand that if it were to go away, they wouldn't have made it stronger. If you ask why are there some cards in foil that are reserve list cards, like I think Mox Diamond is one of them. Um, trying to think of Memory Jar is on a reserve list, but it's also in Relics. It used to be you could print them in specialty sets and that wouldn't count, but then they closed the loophole, which told me that hey, not only are they serious about their reserve list, they want to make it even more strict. So they didn't have to close that loophole, they did it because who knows why. So another thing that can happen to these magic cards, like the tabernacle, is somebody could draw on them. As you saw, the first picture was an anime drawing, and oh my gosh, would it suck, because 
Um, this is very cute. It's a seven-year-old daughter who did a altar on the tabernacle. But yeah, this stuff happens all the time. You know, I, it happens all the time. Cards get lost, cards get damaged, but there will never be a new tabernacle. So why wouldn't you put money into something like this? Um, recently, lots of really bad Mirage cards are on the move. Ancestral Knowledge is like a $20 card right now. As of this recording of the video, it could probably drop before. There's like Seed of Knowledge or something like that, or Seed of Innocence. That card is spiked like crazy. Also from Mirage. You know, I don't... These are not real prices, but they tell you that... If you really needed a tabernacle, where would you get it? You're going to pay out the nose, right? It has to come from the secondary market. And guess what? There were more tabernacles, and, and many of them in much better condition, 10 years ago than there are today. J that's just the reality of these cards. And that's why I think Legacy cannot but die, because if it's based on these dual lands, which, yes, outside the Dredge deck it is, then you're kind of screwed because your player base, theoretically, let's say Magic existed for 100 years, less and less people every single year will be able to play Magic, not only because of the price, but because there's just less of these lands. These lands, you spill some coke on it. You uh, Bad things can happen. In fact, Chaos Orb, you, you, know, you flip it and then... You flip. I mean, imagine this without a sleeve. You're flipping it. You're ripping it. You're, you're doing random stuff with it. It's not meant to be in good condition. Like this particular card is a very good example of how people play Magic back in the day. They're not using sleeves. Sleeves has only happened recently. Uh, it, it's only been recent that these cards have been so expensive. So Black Lotus was the most expensive card when I started playing. That was $20, and people were really pissed off about that. It was, I remember it being $20 in Inquest. And Inquest making fun of it, calling it Highway... What, I think it was another magazine. Scry? There was only two. But these cards were played with. They were abused. They were in sandwich bags. Um, they were they had lunch food on them, you know. When we played Magic in elementary school and in middle school, it was during lunchtime. We had these giant games, and yeah, chocolate milk got spilled over. It happens, and the funny part is, none of us knew that the dual lands were actually good. So my whole play group of eight to ten people, we probably had dual lands, but they were never in our decks because everyone was playing mono color decks. Like, it was just never in the deck. And our decks were so bad. Like, when I think about, like, the cards we probably had and the cards we actually thought were good and used in our deck, it's embarrassing. But at the same time, it's the reality of these cards. And you look at this, this is not even a old card. But things happen to cards. It is really, really sad. And... Things happen to my cards. One day I had a pile of bulk on this. Uh, I don't rip my bulk anymore, but I, you can go back to a video on this channel where people were super upset that I was ripping my bulk. And it fell. It wasn't even bulk. Actually, it was like 5 to $10 cards at the time. It fell into a swimming pool. I was over at my friend's home, and he had a swimming pool. We both play magic. He's a doctor. And I had some bulk. He had some bulk. We, we were playing this game where you use each other's bulk. So you give someone someone's bulk and you have to make a deck. I forget what it was called. And you bid on the deck with life and cards. Like Inquest used to have all these different games that you we used to play. Emperor and whatever that game was where you bid life. First you bid a card hand, hand um, size. Then you bid life and then that's how you get decks and then there's the game that you are trying to make the worst deck for your and then you give it to your opponent to play so we were playing the bulk game where we had to make decks from bulk and my bulk pile which i owned fell into swing pool well 
yeah, I mean, it sucks, but it happens, right? Like, it just happens. Anyway, that's why I always buy, I'm always looking for reserve list cards. I don't know if my video on Rudy comes out before or after this one, but I like his model. His model is very simple. His model is sell standard crap, buy reserve list cards, hold reserve list cards, continue to buy reserve list cards, and continue to sell standard crap. Like, isn't this every shark's dream? Sell standard, buy legacy vintage? Sounds good to me. Anyway, bye guys.